Thank you for choosing UTIG, fluocinolone acetonide intravitreal implant, 0.18 mg. This video is designed to demonstrate proper administration steps and technique. Please see the end of this video for a presentation of the indication and usage statement and important safety information. UTIC is designed to provide 36-month sustained release of fluocinolone for patients with chronic non-infectious uveitis affecting the posterior segment of the eye. First, prepare for the injection. Every UTIC intravitreal injection procedure should be carried out under aseptic conditions, which includes sterile materials, gloves, drape, caliper, and eyelid speculum, or equivalent. Adequate anesthesia and a broad-spectrum microbicide should be given prior to the injection. Now, we'll review step-by-step -step instructions for proper UTIC injection. Just prior to injection, administer topical and or subconjunctival anesthesia at the injection site. The inferotemporal quadrant area is recommended. Then administer two to three drops of a broad spectrum microbicide into the lower fornix. The lids may be scrubbed with cotton tipped applicators soaked with a broad spectrum microbicide. Then place a sterile lid speculum around the eyelids. Advise your patient to look up and apply additional microbicide solution to the injection site. Allow 30 to 60 seconds for the topical antiseptic to dry prior to injection of UTIC. For optimal placement, UTIC should be injected inferior to the optic disc and posterior to the equator of the eye. Measure 4 mm inferotemporal from the limbus with the aid of calipers for point of entry into the sclera. The UTIC intravitreal injection is supplied in a sterile, single-dose preloaded applicator with a 25-gauge needle packaged in a sealed sterile pouch inside a sealed Tyvek pouch. Make sure to use sterile procedure when opening the pouch and removing the device from its packaging. Remove the UTIC applicator from the sterile pouch by grasping the barrel of the applicator, as shown here. It is important not to grasp the plunger to ensure the UTIC implant does not fall out. Remove the black plunger stop from the plunger. Carefully remove the protective cap from the needle and inspect the needle tip to ensure it is not bent. From this point and just prior to injection, keep the applicator tip above the horizontal plane to ensure the UTIC implant does not fall out. If needle tip is intact, remove the trombone wire from the distal end of the needle. Now gently displace the conjunctiva so that after withdrawing the needle, the conjunctival and scleral needle entry sites will not align. Care should be taken to avoid contact between the needle and the lid margin or lashes. Then insert the needle through the conjunctiva and sclera up to the positive stop of the applicator. Once the needle is fully inserted, depress the plunger at the back of the applicator. From inside the eye, you can see the delivery of the UTIC implant into the posterior segment of the eye. One end of the implant is a permeable membrane made of polyvinyl alcohol where fluocinolone acetonide gets released. Because of the continuous micro-delivery of Duracert, UTIC is designed to deliver a sustained release of fluocinolone acetonide for up to 36 months with just one implant. Now that the implant is complete, remove the UTIC applicator from the eye. Discard in Biohazard Sharps container. Now you can remove the lid speculum and perform indirect ophthalmoscopy to verify adequate central retinal artery perfusion, absence of any other complications, and to verify the placement of the implant. 
Note that scleral depression may enhance visualization of the implant. You may perform a test to measure intraocular pressure at this time. Post-injection follow-up after UTIC insertion. It is important to monitor patients for changes in intraocular pressure and endophthalmitis following injection. Post-injection monitoring may consist of a check for perfusion of the optic nerve head immediately after injection. Tonometry within 30 minutes following injection and or biomicroscopy between two and seven days following injection. Before leaving the office, instruct your patients to report without delay any symptoms suggestive of endophthalmitis. If you would like additional information about UTIC, please see full prescribing information at UTIC.com. Indications and Usage UTIC Fluocinolone acetonide intravitreal implant, 0.18 mg, is indicated for the treatment of chronic non-infectious uveitis affecting the posterior segment of the eye. Important safety information. Contraindications. Ocular or periocular infections. UTIC is contraindicated in patients with active or suspected ocular or periocular infections including most viral disease of the cornea and conjunctiva, including active epithelial herpes simplex keratitis, dendritic keratitis, vaccinia, varicella, mycobacterial infections, and fungal diseases. Hypersensitivity. Utique is contraindicated in patients with known hypersensitivity to any components of this product. Warnings and precautions. Intravitreal injection-related effects. Intravitreal injections, including those with UTIC, have been associated with endophthalmitis, eye inflammation, increased or decreased intraocular pressure, and choroidal or retinal detachments. Hypotony has been observed within 24 hours of injection and has resolved within two weeks. Patients should be monitored following the intravitreal injection. Steroid-related effects. Use of corticosteroids, including UTIC, may produce posterior subcapsular cataracts, increased intraocular pressure, and glaucoma. Use of corticosteroids may enhance the establishment of secondary ocular infections due to bacteria, fungi, or viruses. Corticosteroids are not recommended to be used in patients with a history of ocular herpes simplex because of the potential for reactivation of the viral infection. Risk of implant migration Patients in whom the posterior capsule of the lens is absent or has a tear are at risk of implant migration into the anterior chamber. Adverse Reactions In controlled studies, the most common adverse reactions reported were cataract development and increases in intraocular pressure. Please see full prescribing information.